Greetings, pool fans. We are coming to you from Griff's Billiards here in Las Vegas. It's day two of the WPA Players Championship. We started with 64. We're now down to the round of 32. It is single elimination, race to seven, alternate break, and you must win by two. So the winner moves on to the round of 16 tomorrow. The loser is out. Now, let's meet the players. Firstly, he comes from the Philippines, Johan Chua. And his opponent today is a BCA Hall of Famer, two-time US Open champion, two-time world champion, the one and only Mika Imonen. And now, gentlemen, the lag. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with day two of the WPA Players Championships. We've narrowed it down to the final 32. By the end of today, we'll be down to the final 16 players. Winner of this match advances to round three. We've got Johan Chua versus Mika Eminen. I'm joined alongside my good buddy, Carl Boyce. How are you, Carl? Very good, always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Should have ourselves a great match here. This is a race to seven, win by two format. Alternating break. Standard rack on the nine ball, one up front, nine in the middle. Three point rule in effect on the break, as well as a three foul rule in effect. Johan Chua has won the lag against Mika Eminen. So he will be breaking off first here in rack number one. I said it was a win by two. Should the scoreline be tied at nine apiece, we will have a lag and a one rack decider to determine the winner. As you can see, wing ball doesn't go in, but gets the last ball rolling, as we call it. Does have a shot on this one ball. Everything kind of goes other than the black eight ball. Do you look to play a breakout or a combination for this eight ball at some point, Carl? I think where the five ball is, after pocketing the four ball, he could get an angle to go over. He can get on the six ball, can't he? It depends. If, if the eight and the nine is a combo, he might be tempted to play the five into the nine. Obviously, it's hard to see. He does elect to play that five nine eight combination. Should he land perfectly on the five, he may be fortunate enough to leave himself a five nine combination after pocketing that eight. Tall order, but certainly possible. Elected, elected not to go that route. The problem is you'd, you'd like to try and always break these balls out as soon as possible, but you can't really break them out if you're not going to land on your next ball. And risking breaking it out from the seven, you're kind of just leaving yourself one chance. Like this, I mean, obviously he's got an angle but hitting the eight and the nine, how do you get on the seven, so. Does he try and flick the nine? Yeah, yeah, what a bad effort was it? I think he just tried to, I do believe he tried to flick it. Maybe he didn't, maybe he just wanted to get cue ball in that kind of area because he can obviously play the seven in the side. Is 
Love to bump the nine ball here. Off the back rail. He's missed the ball though. That does happen a lot. You, for, you kind of forget to pot it because you're so concerned on breaking the balls out. And he's left Mika. Fairly easy starter in this match. It was always the problem from the break. Three ball clearance for Mika Eminen on a uh, missed ball from Johan. Got to pocket that ball if you're going to break out the problem situation, Mr. Boyce. I'm afraid so. Some good matches going on today. Looking around the arena, Coping Yi is in action. One of the big guns. His brother is also playing on the table next to him. So here we get to have a look at Mika's break. Mika, been living in America a long time. And the wing ball goes straight in. A little bit unfortunate. Doesn't land on his lowest ball. Something you can you're never going to perfect. It's just part and parcel of the game. So straight away getting down on the shot. So he fancies a, an easy safety. Trying to use the turquoise blue seven ball as a blocker. I don't think he quite got the full ball snooker, but he did well to leave the two ball in a position that it can't be aggressively attacked. However, if Chua can see the right side of this two, I look for him to play safe using the six and five for coverage. Always the danger. I believe that's what he tried to do. Wasn't quite successful. He did tie up the eight, excuse me, the five and the six ball. You still questioning yourself when you're trying to call the six and the seven? Do I? Yeah, I do with the colours still, still trying to process the, the new Cyclops Hyperion balls. I've gotten fairly used to the, the colour change at this point. Um, I know I was a victim of more than one occasion at a national event the year these were introduced. I shot the seven before the six ball once or twice, which I got away with an eight ball. Uh, unfortunately, in nine ball, that's a foul. So there you see, Chua did tie the five, six up, but Mika had a fairly easy shot from the two to the three to guarantee the correct angle. And he's broke them out very well indeed and the sat nice. Just gone for his extension. Mika's one of them type of players. Fantastic front runner. So when he gets in front, he's a he's a high gear player. this though you know he's got such a big margin for error there anywhere in the middle of the table he's a good three foot short so now he's left a thin one I mean you would expect him to pot this ball but he's held it well Nika playing with a pretty quick pace so far As I say that, he takes his time. Yeah, well, he's just obviously looking where he wants the cue ball here. Just to make sure this eight to nine is 
he can play it at ease. Might elect to draw back a little bit. Yeah, and then he'll just play this with bottom left hand spin. As soon as cue ball hits the rail, you'll see it pull down table. There you go. Just play that with loads of left. Don't even rear. You don't have to put a big draw stroke on it. The left hand spin will pull it down table. 2 0. Just like that. 2 0 in favor of Mika Eminem. Mr. Chua will be breaking apart here in rack number three. For those interested in the Fargo aspect of this match, Mika Eminem comes in at a hefty 784 Fargo rate. Johan Chua comes in at a 793. So on paper, Chua favored by nine points. These two are not playing on paper. They're playing on this beautiful nine foot diamond table provided by Diamond Billiard Products. So Chua doesn't make the wing ball, but again, second break going, he finds a random ball. This will be a good sign for Mika because he might be sat there thinking, Johan's not very good at racking the balls in order to make the wing ball. So you would feel like that's a little bit of a, a bonus for Mika. Again, we're not certain if we can see the potting angle of this one ball. Striking down tells me he's playing it with Swerve and he's played a lovely shot. Needs cue ball to run though, and it hasn't. So it's a good shot, but just lacked pace off the rail. top rail, kick this two ball and get the cue ball in between three and the eight. There he's blocking balls. And he's made a slight mess of that, but I don't think the two passes the five. Maybe it does. I think there's a gap there, isn't there, Ben? Looks like there's just enough to slide through there. It's going to need to avoid contact entirely with that five, I believe. Unless he hits it full, full in the face, Mike. He split that one, didn't he? Yeah, it was a good shot, really, because um, he couldn't hold for the three, so he just decided to make sure he pots the two and bumps into the balls. You would think he'd have some kind of shot. Like you say, he's not messing about, is he? Not hit this how he wanted, though. I do believe he tried to come round the back of this four to shoot it up table. Combo very difficult. Cue ball and object ball real close together. F I find that's always quite a difficult shot when they're so close together. Yeah, very, very difficult to judge angles. From that close. And there you go, I mean. Kind of rushed it. Yeah. He had a quite an easy safety shot. He could have just clipped off the edge of the four. Very attacking player, but I think that was a little one too much. Not many players that have got down and I mean I can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get on that. He knows he's a buzz player, doesn't he? You know what I mean? So he's thinking I can keep him off the table. been noted as a mistake from Mika and he's um, he's going to lose this rack now and Johan's back in the match good news for Mika he'll be breaking in rack number four we saw in our, our first match of the day Jason Shaw, we saw just how important the break shot is. 
Jason actually alluded to that fact in his interview after the match. How he was having the opportunities after the break. Was Jason making the wing ball? Jason was making the wing ball, yeah, yes. Yeah, he's in, in himself, Shane Van Bowen in and the, the good at racking these balls, getting them necessary gaps. So let's see the purple four ball is the intended ball off the break. Straight in this corner, there you see it, straight in the centre. Mika knows how to rack the balls. Not left the pot though. Now he's made two balls, so Johan can. Um he's made two on the break, but I think they're bringing the ref over to decide whether or not the seven ball has passed the head string. We do have a three point rule in effect for the break. Two balls were pocketed on the break. Uh, a total of three balls need to be pocketed and or cross the head string. Mika knows he's still at the table looking at his shot. He's not bothered what's going on with Johan and, and the referee because he knows that's broke the line. Maybe Johan Chu is asking if all the ball has to go past the line. So, like I said, Mika knew the rule there. So. He was just casually walking around the table without a care in the world <laughs> what was going on, was it? <laughs> kind of funny. So he's going for his jump cue. Cue ball looks close to these balls, so he's got to get this up. I've had a few messages about our conversation yesterday, Ben. Which conversation, Carl? Regarding the stun run through. Oh, yes. Remember? I do. I've had messages saying it's called a stun follow in America, so. That's what I said. And you said a stun shot was the same as a stop shot. No, but when you say stop the cue ball in America, you say a stop shot. Mm -hmm. So why don't you say a stop follow? Why do you then say stun? I don't know why. Straight. Good hit, but obviously intended to pocket the one, hit it too full. And Mika can see this one ball. You would expect him to pot it. Just got to navigate cue ball. Good shot. Mika looking good here early on. The five ball does pass the eight to the lower right. in good shape here. Key in this shot is make sure you land high on the five. See where he pointed right there. Six ball is more over the pocket than I first looked at to be fair, so it's not really that key. Thought it was more near the bottom rail. He did land high, very high. <laughs> It's a big rack because Mika will feel like shit, he could have won the last one. So whenever you've gifted a rack to your opponent, it's always nice to win the very next one and just try and get yourself back to where you feel you was. And he's looking in pretty good nick, to be fair. He's playing quick. He's, he looks confident, so... Yeah, he looks really good today. We saw him on our feature table yesterday. Trying to remember who his opponent was. I think it was Jeffrey Ignacio. Um, Miko was trailing two to zero and actually won, I believe, seven straight racks. Again, Mika looking really good today. Taking a 3 1 lead over Johan Chua here. Chua to break apart rack number five. Folks, we're coming to you live from Griff's Billiards here in Las Vegas. This event is sponsored by How Tips, Predator Cubes, The Rio Hotel, and Casino, Master Billiard Shock, Andy 988 Billiard Cloth, that beautiful green cloth you see on this awesome nine foot diamond table provided by Diamond Products. 
course, this event is produced by CSI and brought to you by the WPA. So a complete collaboration has allowed us to bring this event to you folks and to the players. And I tell you what, we've been treated, folks. First four days were qualifiers. Yesterday, today, and the following two days are stage two of the main event, $50,000 added to the prize fund. This is single elimination, so both players know the importance, not only the set, but each individual rack. Johan does make the wing ball. Crushed that one. Yeah, made, he's made three balls on the break. But look at that, no shot. And it always seems to be the case, he's 3-1 down. You need a bit of help from the game to try and stay in the match. And he's not got an easy run out. And the push out's kind of obvious, but the kick shot after it is again obvious, so. It's an interesting spot now. Chua taking his time studying the situation at hand. Obviously not thrilled with it. Broken made three balls. He'd You'd love to have a shot after that. As we saw in our first match of the day, similar scenario to Mr. Jeff DeLuna, breaking and successfully pocketing. One, two, three balls on the break, but was never rewarded with a shot afterward. Now, the one ball does go in the side. So kicking it, you, you're going to go close to that. I'm not saying the player's going to take that on because they might kick distance instead. Mika did get down to see if he could see the edge of that one. So. And I saw a little hand flick from Chua after he had shot the shot, which made me kind of think he wasn't satisfied with his result. Mm. So there might be an edge on offer for Mika here. Oh, yeah. Needs this one ball to run, though. That's a mistake. Real poor safety there from Mika. Chua now with an opportunity, which is what he needs. He needs a little help from either the table or from his opponent at the moment. Deficits are tougher to overcome in an alternate break format. shot there. Might get a little nudge on the eight ball here. Johan also using a longer version of the cue. Seems to be taking off that. Yeah, it seems a lot of the top play well, a lot of players in general now just seem to be playing with an extension full time. attempted to play with an extension full-time, so I can't personally say whether or not I think there's any benefit to it. I had a little dabble myself. I think um, it just makes you hit the ball not as hard and get the same result out of the shots. Good little, good little piece of info there. So two are capitalizing on a mistake from Mika. Failed safety attempt. Mika will be breaking in rack number six. Mika's leading by a score of three to two. We are racing to seven. This is a win by two format.
should this match go nine to nine, we will have a lag and single rack decider to determine the winner. As you said, Mika, an excellent racker and understander of the rack and break as he pockets the wing ball effortlessly again. Leaves himself a shot on the one. The four ball and the six ball both did cross the head string, so it is a legal break. say Mika is looking in top form right now. I've always been a fan of uh, Mika's Q action. Very loose, fluent. Gets through the ball really well. As I said before, a lot of firepower. You know, can really um, beat a lot of the top boys up. I'm sure he has done. Yeah, as Ted Lerner mentioned pre-game introductions, pre-match introductions. Former Hall of, or excuse me, former world champion, Hall of Famer. Got a resume as long as your arm. It's been around a while and I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon. Four to two favor of Mr. Eminem. So Johan's going to need a little bit of assistance here, be it from Mika or the table or both. If they keep exchanging racks at this point. The finish will make his way to the finish line. Folks, if you're wondering who our four o'clock match is, you're in for a treat. We've got Carlo Beato versus Skylar Woodward. Moscone Cup MVP versus another one of the best in the world, one of the best Filipinos to ever hold a cue. Carlo Beato, looking forward to that match. Parks the cue ball, makes a ton of balls again, but as you can see, no friends off the break. He did an excellent job of parking the white there, pocketed three balls again. We saw him pocket three on his last break. Again, not left with an aggressive opportunity. So he's going to be ducking here against Mika. Filipino players very imaginative on a pool table. Many great players come from that side of the world. He's a bit concerned where this one ball is going to end up. Obvious sort of shot to people watching. He's probably trying to get cue ball in between, in, be, in behind the three ball at the bottom. But he knows he's pushing the one over to the left side, so cue ball would have to be perfect. So that's what's scaring him. I don't believe that's any good. I think there's a window. Could be wrong, but I think Mika can at least see this ball. Or a piece of it. Let's see 
if we can figure out what he's thinking based on his actions here. What do you see, Carl? Too hard to tell? No, I think he's going to play the one ball on the bottom rail and try and get the cue ball behind this four or play the cross bank. Very attacking Ooh. player, Mika, isn't he? I don't think he likes playing safe, although he has got safe, but it wasn't intended. I think many a player might have just ducked, put one ball on the, the bottom and tried to get him behind the four, but like I say, he likes to attack the table. You have to say the run of the ball at the moment is definitely favouring Mika. Johan can't even get a shot after the break. Do believe Mika can pop this. Always see players walk round at the potting angle when it's a blind pocket shot. Just sort of settles you down for the shot. Kind of makes you feel like you've visioned it a bit better. Although we'd like to take that one again. So Johan does have a shot on this one. It's by no means easy. Cue ball, natural path is taking it into the six ball, unless he tries to draw the life out of this shot to miss it which he is so you're going to see if he, if he makes this ball cue ball's going to come in between the purple four and the green one nice shot struck that ball very nicely Good little angle here. Got some options for the four as well. I think he's looking at playing it into the left side. Tells me he will be spinning this cue ball two rails, narrowly avoiding the seven. Landing about a foot above where it is now. And once again, I predicted incorrectly. <laughs> Just let you hang yourself dry there. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Wow, it's a mistake. The positional error wasn't perfect, but I would have expected Johan to still make that ball, but it was getting on the, the six that was scaring him. And it's a gift for Mika Imminent. After missing the cross bank, he's got these remaining three balls to get a healthy, a very healthy three, three rack lead. I feel like I can't talk to them. And it's the best night of sleep of us. <laughs> <laughs> Figure that out. <laughs> Is it Mika's break next? I do believe it is and all, as we've seen. Yeah, we saw two up broken, made three again, but again, wasn't rewarded with any sort of attacking position on the one. And a missed pot on the four ball has gifted Mika rack number seven. So we're well underway into stage two of the WPA Players' Championships. The inaugural WPA Players Championships as well. This is the first time the WPA have actually run their own event. So it's big, big news in the world of pool. By the end of today, we will be down to our final 16 players. Battling it out for that $10,000 first prize. There you see again, the pool gods are definitely favoring Mika. He was sending cue ball straight into middle pocket and a random ball kept it dry. Big rack now. Big shot here. He's clearly getting position on the three. Can he draw right back for three in the side or can he top this ball in and pinch a bit for the three ball in the 
top pocket where he's sort of playing from. I believe he did try that, but just forgot to put side on it, yeah. That little waft of his cue tells you he wanted cue ball well over to the left. So he must have cued across that one. He's made a few mistakes himself, but that last rack, Johan really let him off, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Saw Chua up in here in action the other night. Guy couldn't miss a ball. This in action. Oh, nice wow. cut shot there, wasn't it? I thought for sure he was playing safe. Mika in a very attacking mood today. Yeah, I mean, he must have a dinner date or something because he's not hanging around, is he? shot well controlled in absolutely perfect position there and these remaining four balls look a formality and this will put Mika on the hill Navigated that, and it's going to be 6 2. It will be Johan Chua to break, but he's at the point of no return in this match. Bad news if you're losing this round, you're basically out of everything because first round losers went into the consolation event. Well, we started with 64, first 32 players to get knocked over to the B side. Shouldn't even say B-side, this is a single elimination tournament. So the first 32 players eliminated had their oppor opportunity to play in our consolation event, which will be running right alongside our main event. We saw Niels Fine defeat Walid Majid by a score of five to zero in that consolation event. So Mika on the hill. Chua needs them all from here. The game's not really helped him on the break, so. Let's have a look. He's had no problem pocketing balls on the break. He's yeah, and he's parking the white, isn't he? He's and not being rewarded with a shot afterward. But he's got a shot here, so. You know, he's only four behind. So he was finally able to have an opening shot. And he's got position on the deuce here. Um, I believe the seven ball does pass. It does go in the side pocket. Just kind of looking a few shots ahead just to see what he's planning. He'll play this off the side rail where he's kind of stood to miss the five. Well, to get down table, he is very straight on this ball. Doesn't need to do too much with it, but he would have liked a little bit more angle, I do believe. See him kind of force that ball. It did pretty well. Came above it to play the five in the same side. Chua looking great here in rack number nine. It's about the first we've seen him have an opportunity after the break. And he proves that when he's given that opportunity, he can do something with it. So in about one minute's time, Chua breaks and runs rack number nine. 
Still trailing Namika by a score of six to three. Folks, we encourage you to take a look at the top of your screen, but we'll touch on them as well. We are coming to you from Griff's Billiards here in Las Vegas. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Predator Cues, Diamond Billiard Products, Andy988 Billiard Cloth, How Tips, Cyclop Pool Balls. These are the new Cyclop Hyperion Pool Ball set. The official chalk of this event is Master Billiard Chalk. And this event is being produced by CSI and brought to you by the WPA. This is day two of stage two. Started today with 32. By the end of the day, we'll be down to our final 16. Mika so far batting a thousand on the break in regards to pocketing the wing ball. Great angle there, we can see Mika's starting shot. Doesn't really have much work to do here. You can just roll this in naturally and he'll be rewarded a shot in the side pocket for the two ball. Big shot, it's kind of looks like match ball, you would think. Whenever striking down on the cue ball, it's always missable. And he smashes the table. There's still life left in this match, don't worry about that. Four racks at nine ball pool can soon vanish. He'll be disappointed there because it. It was a difficult shot, don't get me wrong, but you always fancy making that ball. Of course, Johan will have the next break, so after missing that one ball, Mika might not get out of his chair. The scoreline could be 6-5. When you've been 6-2 up, and then it's 6-5, does add that little bit of pressure. Oh, certainly. So Chua showing that he is not giving up. Putting up a fight all the way to the end, handling his business yet again. So this regular nine ball, and the score will be 6-4. If Johan Chua would have made that four ball earlier on, we would be tied at 5-5. But we're not. So Chua clawing back at this set. Right back in it and breaking off here in rack number 11, trailing by six to four. This is day two of four days of the WPA Players Championship coming to you live from Griff's Billiards here in Las Vegas. Definitely having a good time out here, being treated to some amazing pool, great atmosphere, great food, great feel in the room, great service. All is good for this event, folks. Chua breaking off here in rack number 11. Chua's chalk, sporting one of them little uh, plastic holders. You don't see many of them from the pros. Something you'd uh, have that, Ben. Thanks. You'd be one of them who magnetizes it on your trousers, wouldn't you? Yeah, I got the shark tooth in the. Yeah, one of them <laughs> wallies. <laughs> I'm glad I can be the 
the butt of some of your jokes this week, <laughs> Carl? There'll be many more to oh. come. <laughs> like I said, we're having fun. We can't joke around with each other. What can we do? So Chua, again, able to pocket a ball and lay down a successful break. Yeah, as we said, we've spoke about this many times. One little mistake and you can soon lose ranks. Needs this cue ball to run on. Difficult to see if he can really grab hold of this to get the... He'd love to get the cue ball right over on the top side of the table because of where the six is after the five ball. Do you dig this ball with draw or do you really spin this with inside and come? Soft hands really spin the ball. Yeah, you see what I mean? He really got into it. Played it well. Yes, he did. Because he had to avoid the middle. And he wanted to avoid the six ball as well. Now he can play this with right and spin to get the cue ball back down this right-hand side of the table. Nicely judged. Yeah, and from nowhere. Mika's going to be um, put under it a bit now. He's going to be feeling a little bit of heat, is Mika. Oh, that's an awesome view right there. We got to see it almost how, almost exactly how the shooter got to see it. That's pretty cool. Don't forget, we're playing win by two. So if it does go 6-6, six, six, you have to win by two clear racks. 9-9 nine, nine will be the cutoff point. Both players will lag if it goes 9-9. Nine, nine, it'll be a one rack shootout. We've only seen that once in this event so far, as far as I know. Our last match of the evening yesterday, Fedor Gorst and Naoki Oi went the distance. Naoki won the lag and was able to break and run the case game. There's our format, folks, on the screen. We've touched on it a little bit, but now you get a little visual of it. This is single elimination nine ball. Stage two are all races to seven except for the semifinals and the finals, which will be races to nine. All matches are win by two. Alternating breaks on nine foot diamond tables. Should we have a hill hill match? We will have a lag and break for the deciding. What a game. time for an illegal break and look what he's left. Mika imminent, so good at racking the balls and breaking. He's had a, a meltdown there. You can see the frustration. What has he done there? He slug racked himself at 6 5. Anybody watching wondering why Mika's not on the table because he made a ball? We are playing the three-point rule. The idea of the three-point rule is to take away the soft breaks. So he's only made one ball, and you get a point for a ball passing the head string. And as you can see, all the balls stayed down here. Unusual to be taking this in the corner, but feels like it's the only way you can get on his next ball. And these balls are sat begging. Stop shot. Play the window. Let's not forget, folks. Chua was 6 2 down in this match. Probably a, about 10 minutes ago and all. So these 4x have been real quick. Mika's had one slight opportunity where he missed the jack, took one ball. And then obviously that poor break off, so he has had opportunities. Needs to avoid the eight ball here. Doesn't want to be straight on this ball. 
bigger angle would have been easier. Now he's going to have to play a four shot, which makes this shot a lot more difficult. Very important shot and a very important rack, especially for Chua. Mika wins this rack. The set is done. If Chua wins this match, we're guaranteed at least two more racks of play. Good shot. Had to follow the cue ball in with a little bit of left hand spin. Struck that ball very, very nicely. See him taking his time here a little bit with these last three. He realizes the importance, of course, of this rack and what it could mean for his tournament life. If you've been ultra critical, he's landed on the wrong side of the eight. So we have seen people make mistakes when they've landed low. So slight, slight glimmer for Mika. He will know he's on the wrong side as well. Do you know what he's just drew out right there? He's, I think he's looking to put a massive low left stroke on this ball, taking the cue ball. Three rails. Fortunately, I can't draw it out, but this is, oh, now he's going forward, which I think is probably smarter. Scary position to be in. He's yeah. landed on the 50 yard line here. So this is a lot thinner than it looks. Got down quick though. Not so wasting any time, is he, Carl? He's missed it. Wow. This is the problem when you land on the wrong side of the eight. If he lands two or three inches higher on the eight, it's six six. And he's missed the nine. Granted, he's not left an easy shot for Mika, but it's a shot he thought he wasn't going to have. So it's decision time for Mika Imminem. I'm not a believer in playing safe here. Because the safety shot is brutal. So. Just received a little hint from the sidelines that this nine ball is not frozen to the rail. It's very, very, very close. That's a good angle there. You can see there is a slight gap. So Mika has a little room to work with a, a bank shot, which is obviously not the shot you want, but I think it's the right shot at this point. He doesn't want to allow Chua back to the table at all. There is not an easy safety on offer. If he faults at all on the safety, he knows is potentially selling out the rack. I think his best opportunity is to be aggressive and give himself that chance to win right now. Sometimes you can see a slight two-way shot in here, but it's more of an exhibition shot. He's fired at the bank, didn't really have a, a choice, and it's always very difficult to get the ball safe as he throws his arm up in the air. We've seen that a few times over the years. It looked like he took he took a moment or two to assess the situation and decide what he wanted to do, but when it came time to doing it, he got down awfully quick, more so than it seems than he normally shoots. I don't know, it seems like he rushed it a little bit, but I could be wrong. So it's been, um, we've had twists and turns in this match. Yes, that's what, four in a row for Chua? Yep. We're tied up at six apiece, which changes the dynamic a little bit. It's no longer a race to seven. Now it's win by two. Without getting too boring or detailed, should this match go seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, there will be a one rack decider. There will be a lag to determine who breaks that rack. We haven't seen that yet on our feature table. So that would be pretty interesting. Chua checking his own rack. 
So Chua misses the nine ball. Left a horrible lead for Mika. Mika fired at a bank, missed it. And it's six six, nine ball nearly went. Ooh. Where's the two ball gone? I'll tell you what, look at this. Wow. How do you like them? So this is the third or fourth rack. We've seen him make a third of the rack on the break. Only in the latter half of this set has he been rewarded with position after such successful breaks. Looking really good here, rack number 13. Extremely powerful breaker, this young man. Mika must be sat there thinking, what's going on here? Everything's gone my way, the pool gods are on my side. Breaking good, racking good. Six, two up, all of a sudden he's gonna be seven, six down. I didn't see this one coming, I won't lie. This is the beautiful thing about nine ball pool though. There's always twists and turns. So Mika needs to win this rack, otherwise he will be out of this year's Players' Championships. Just wondering if he will make sure he gives himself a better rack this time because his previous break was a bit of a shocker. Yeah, he's clearly a little bit flustered and rightfully so. He was in a commanding lead and now all of a sudden he's the one with his back against the wall. He's an angry, angry man out there at the minute. And he needs this two ball to keep rolling. And it has done, so he does have a shot. First shot, key. Has to get on this four ball, doesn't he? The purple four to the left of your screens will be his next ball after this blue two. More pressure added onto Mika's shoulders now for obvious reasons. He was 6 2 up in this match, let's not forget. He'll be happy with that, I think, because he's nudged it, so at least he's got a shot. He's bridging, he'll be at full stretch. It's gone back to the extension, it looks like. Now, will he be able to reach it, or will he have to? No, he's actually pulled out his own funky little rest gadget here, bridge. Ah. So he can't reach it, so... This it's is good, never it's easy. a double X rest. That, that rest there, the bridge, I've used it. That is very high, striking down. Oh, my. On the cue ball. Oh, my goodness, folks. Did you believe what you just saw? Mika is sick. Mika is sick. Yeah, we're just saying there, I mean, he played it super fast as well. He, it is very high, that that bridge. And when you're striking down, it's key. You hit center of the white ball. Any little bit of spin, and it acts as like a swerve shot. The, the cue ball swerves. So Johan's taking his time here, but he does have a shot on this four ball. Obviously, he's got to try and get on that five. Nine balls scaring him a little bit, but can he pot it thin and just come underneath the nine and leave a long five? He's taking off his extension. Interesting, he's played with it every shot this match, and he's 
opted to take it off for this shot. I think because it's on the rail, you usually hold a little bit higher up the queue. So he's probably feeling like his queue feels ultra long. So he's just, that's what he's looking at. He's looking at the shot I suggested. Just pop your four ball and come low of the nine and just, well, maybe he's took the extension off because he's jacked up. Cue ball can go anywhere here. And he has, he's scratched. Oh, wow, how did that ball not go in? That is unbelievable. That looked like it were gonna vanish, didn't it? It did, and I looked straight at Mika to try and gain some sort of perspective into how that shot made him feel, and I must say he held himself together rather stoic. He didn't show, show any emotion. That's a pretty good effort, you know. He's just gone wiping his cue down. He's putting his extension back on. <laughs> I believe the six will pass. If it doesn't, it's a very natural combination. Six ball tracks toward the upper left. But I think he can make it clean. He doesn't like it. I don't know if he, if he follows the cue ball, is he concerned, is, is he, is he going to scratch in the side? I don't know. I think he wants to top it to get the cue ball back out. Yeah, he's all right. It's not over yet, though. Another little plot twist. Yeah, it's not over yet. If he can just pop this ball and miss the eight and go two rails behind it, that makes this shot a lot easier because you can just concentrate on the pot. And he can, because of the speed he's got down. And he's made it. And I think Mika Imanen now knows. He's still smashing his cue on the floor. He needs this to run on, and it's gonna. And it's gonna, it's perfect. He missed one a little while ago, but you don't feel like he's gonna miss this one, this for the win. And it's there, what a victory from 6-2 down. Johan Chua takes down Mika Eminen by a scoreline of eight to six. After being up six to two, Mika fails to close it out. I think we're gonna get a post-match interview here with Mr. Ted Lerner. Okay, we're here with the winner, Johan Chu of the Philippines. Man, Johan, come on in. You were down 6-2, looking sure like you were going to go home early. All of a sudden, you win 8-6. to six. How did you pull that off? Well, you know, I didn't expect that, that, that win. You know, it was 6-2. I was really disappointed. I missed a lot of shots, but, you know, in the, in the beginning, I was very unlucky in the break, but in the end, you know, the rules is with me, so, you know, that's, that's how it goes, you know. So I'm really happy that you know, I, I pulled this off. He looked like he was getting uh, quite frustrated, and rightly so, because, you know, I mean, he was up 6-2 and it looked like he was going to win. Do you feed off of that when you see an opponent uh, sort of losing his composure a bit? Yeah, when, when the score was 6-5, when he, he made the dry break, I think, and I think I, I I will win the match. I was thinking because he was I, I I see him, I saw I saw that he's um, a little disappointed already. It's just that his mental is not already there. So I feel really good in the, when I when the score is six five. Okay, so now uh, you're in to the final sixteen here at the WPA Players Championship. After coming back from the dead, we often see this in pool guys who figure, well, I'm about to lose, packing up the queue. All of a sudden, you turn it around, something happens, and you win, and now you can play in a freewheeling style. Do you feel like you uh, have a second chance now? Well, it was a very uh, big chance for me. You know, I was really I was really lost in that match, but I don't think that way. You know, I'll just one step at a time, so I'll just try to do my best every every match, just w one step at a time. Okay, Johan, congratulations through to the final 16. Thank you so much, Ted.